Hello everyone. We Christians believe and profess that there is one God who is manifested in three persons, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And yet we know that he is a mystery who transcends human understanding. I believe that one of the times we can all get to know God in a deeper and personal way is Lent. The more we know Him, the more we will be drawn to Him in love, and the more our lives will conform to His image. The whole purpose of Lent is to help us become more like God the Father, who has revealed Himself through His Son, Jesus Christ. Friends, we began the 40-day season of Lent on Ash Wednesday with the sign of the cross made on our foreheads with the ashes as the words, Repent and believe in the Gospel, were uttered as a reminder for us to return to God with the help of prayer, penance and acts of charity. As part of our preparation, in the first week, we reflected on Luke's narrative of the temptations of Jesus by Satan. We realize that we often face the same temptations as Jesus did the temptation to use things at our disposal for self-gratification, the temptation to compromise our Christian beliefs, convictions and values for material wealth, possessions and power, and the temptation to challenge the authority and power of God. However, we have also learned that God has made available to us the same means, the scriptures which our Lord Jesus himself used to resist all temptations. Yet our experience and observation may have taught us, if and when we choose God over Satan, we suffer. Therefore in the following week, Luke's account of the transfiguration of Jesus reminded us that suffering, afflictions and hardships are inevitable if and when we choose to obey God. We learned that the transfiguration was meant to teach the disciples that Jesus' suffering and death were necessary for our salvation and that our Christian discipleship entails a cross of suffering. But after the cross, there come blessing and glory. But not everyone is willing to suffer. Most of us try to avoid suffering at all costs and we pray that God may alleviate our human suffering and dispel our constant worries. Some believers hate God because He allows them to suffer. Some others see suffering as God's punishment. Still others keep asking the same questions that non-believers and non-Christians ask. Why does God allow suffering? If God exists, why is there so much evil around us? And so on. Friends, the third week we are reminded that God does not promise to prevent any of our suffering or even remove it, but rather teaches us to deal with it, particularly through two temporal events, one the slaughter of some unfortunate Galileans as they went to offer their sacrifices and the other the death of 18 people when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. And the parable of the barren fig tree, Jesus teaches us that suffering is a consequence of our own sin or the sins of others or our sinful nature as human beings, but certainly not a punishment from God. And we all will die even though the manner and the time of our death are unpredictable. Therefore, in the time given to us, it is important, Jesus points out, that we repent and turn around and live a meaningful and fruitful life. The fourth week, the story of the father with two sons reminded us that God richly blesses those who return to him in repentance with every spiritual and earthly gift. In the story, the father represents God the father, and the two sons represent two groups of people, 
the sinners and the righteous in the world. We are told that our Heavenly Father gives us freedom of choice even though He knows the true consequences of our action. He longs to have a loving and lasting relationship with us. He does not force us into it. However, He is saddened by our rebellion, but at the same time He never gives up on us. He patiently waits for us to turn to Him. When we return to Him, He shows compassion for us and delights in our coming home and restores our fortunes. Nevertheless, the righteous will continue to condemn us and envy our homecoming. Last Sunday we learned through the story of the woman caught in adultery that God forgives us despite our guilt regardless of the severity of our sin because of his love for us and he also forgives us so that we are healed and do not sin anymore. Friends, in today's first reading the prophet Isaiah describes God's son Jesus Christ as the suffering servant who would not shield himself from those who were attacking him, buffeting him and spitting on him. As the servant of the Lord, Jesus would accept rejection and ultimately execution. In the Passion narrative of Luke's Gospel, we read the prophecies of Isaiah being fulfilled. Friends, our God is a suffering God. He was tested and tempted just like us. He was rejected, betrayed, denied, mocked, flogged, beaten and killed. He is a God who allows suffering and who calls on us to suffer for Him and His teachings. Do you truly believe in such a God? If you do, then do you use God's word to combat Satan's temptations? Or do you easily yield to temptations and suffer consequences for your sins? Do you fear pain and suffering? Or do you willingly accept suffering for Christ's sake? Do you see suffering as punishment from God for your sins or see it as an opportunity to repent and turn to God? Friends, let us remember our God is also a loving and merciful God. If you have wandered away, He wants you to come back to Him in repentance and renew your personal relationship with Him. Do you want God's forgiveness, peace and His love? If you say yes, then you must do only one thing this week. Just believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God and our Savior. Confess your sins and receive God's forgiveness and free gift of new life offered to us through His passion, death and resurrection. Amen. God bless you.